So, part three, protein folding, and why the hell should I care? Well, if you've heard arguments like this. If there were an, an evolutionary change, every, every second there's not enough time for anything to evolve. Now let's compare these numbers just to give you a visual perspective on this. This is the odds of an amino acid sequence happening by chance. This is the number of atoms in the universe. When I sat and wrote all this down, I, I was so amazed and so astounded at, at, God, at God's greatness. I could, all I could do was sit there and cry in front of my computer screen. It was just so amazing to me. You need to watch this video. Yep, I was jolly tempted to make this part of the Why Do People Laugh at Creationist series. As this is the story of how things that would be expected to happen randomly, say, once in a trillion times the lifetime of the universe, are actually happening on a period of milliseconds. So, some amazing facts about life. The story so far. Electrons stick to nuclei to form atoms, and atoms stick together to form molecules, one subsection of which is the biomolecules, and one subsection of that is the proteins. Proteins are the doers in the cells of cellular life, such as yourself, and frequently they need to do things in moderation, like hemoglobin, which wants to bind oxygen to transport it, but not so strongly that it'll never let it go afterwards. Hooey! So, like I was saying, proteins need to do things in moderation, and in this vein, proteins typically have two states, one folded, that's the native state, in which it has its biological function, and the other denatured or unfolded, where it doesn't have that biological function, but can do other useful things, such as get broken down and excreted, or similar. So maybe the simplest analogy here is those snake puzzles that used to be popular. Each node has four possible configurations, but there's only one state, like this. Now, proteins typically have their function in the folded state, but here's the rub. There's only one folded state, and a bloody lot of not folded states. But let's just do a simple calculation here. Let's take a smallish protein, a real simple model of a 66 amino acid protein. Each bond can say have 36 configurations. So your chances of being in the correct configuration, the native state, is with one bond, one in 36. If you have two bonds, it's about one in a thousand, three bonds, one in 40,000, and so on. And that means for this 66 amino acid protein, there are some 10 to the power of 100 possible configurations that this protein could exist in. That's a one with a hundred zeros after it. Now, even if we were generous and say that random thermal motions mean that this protein can randomly explore a trillion configurations per second, this would still mean that for the protein to randomly find its folded state would be expected to take well over a trillion times the lifetime of the universe. In reality, however, proteins of this size typically find their native state in about a thousandth of a second. And yeah, that's happening right here, right now, in every cell in your body as you watch this video. However, at this point, many of you will have pricked up an ear and said, hang on, yeah, I've heard many a creationist make arguments like this, how evolution is too improbable to happen randomly, and they're, oh God, I've got him started now. The logical principle lists 10 steps in the course of human evolution, each of which is so improbable that before it would occur, the sun would have ceased to be a main sequence star and incinerated the earth. However, curiously few biochemists have decided that because protein folding is too improbable to happen randomly, I mean, more improbable than a tornado ripping through a junkyard and leaving a fully formed jumbo jet that... And it was literally a miracle and therefore evidence for the existence of God. <laughs> so... I don't think this is an argument for atheism. In reality, of course, it's painfully simple. While thermal motions are random, the stability of the protein states is not. That is, proteins do not randomly explore parameter space. Just as with evolution, mutations may be random, but environmental and sexual selection are definitely not random. And yeah, this means that things like proteins finding their native state that might be expected to take billions of times the lifetime of the universe can actually happen in milliseconds. No miracles required. And while there's this broad brush understanding of the processes of protein folding, that is, certain structures have a tendency to very quickly collapse into these larger granules that then fold to the correct structure, the molecular details are not very well understood. Primarily, this is because it's actually quite technologically challenging to get insight in what's happening 
in these systems on a length scale of about a billionth of a meter on a time scale of about a thousandth of a second. I mean, there really just aren't that many methods that allow you to get molecular level insight into systems like this. Now, I'm actually one of the guys working on this problem using one of the few techniques that will allow you to get this direct structural insight into these water solutions. Indeed, the technique that we'll be using here involves no less than a nuclear reactor. Yep, in order to get some insight into how these living systems function, we're going to have to split some of the very nuclei of uranium-235. And that's what I'm going to pick up in the next part of this series.